Councillors, ladies and gentlemen, please be outstanding for the Chair and Vice Chair of Harlow Council. Council Landscape and Biodiversity Manager, who passed away very, very recently. If we could go ahead with that, please, one moment of silence. Seated. Before we move any further, I'd like to ask one member of each group if they'd like to say a few words about them before we proceed. Okay, can I give you? Yes. Understand what he was talking about, but over the years we've all come to understand, and it's because of people like Darren that our understanding has grown. He obviously, as has, has been noted at these meetings over the years, he's won many prizes for his work uh, through the council. But I would particularly like to uh, mention his personal attributes, which was that although you might disagree with that one. You couldn't help but like him. And he was always uh, very cheerful. So <coughs> I would like to pay my appreciation to Darren as a nice person and the sort of person you should have more of in this world. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. start by saying that I absolutely concur with everything that's already been said about Darren. Um, I've known him since I first became a councillor and uh, was uh, given the, the honour of chairing the Environment Committee and so I worked closely with Darren on a number of things but uh, top of his list was always the uh, Palmden Wood uh, Wildlife Centre and request for um, approval for the green flag, which is uh, something with, without uh, any little effort is needed to achieve that. Um, I, I once said to him, well, what is this green flag, Darren, what's it about? And he gave me a 
big file about that thick. And he said, that's what we've got to achieve over the next few years. And uh, blow me, he went and did it. And we now have uh, a green flag for um, our, uh, our Parliament uh, area. Yes, he was extremely hard working. Um, so hard working, in fact, and so much did he love his work that he would frequently spend the night in Palmer Wood uh, looking for particular animals or particular uh, species of things that uh, he was hoping would, would, would grow there or would, would live there. So he loved his work and he was very, very good at it. Um, you meet a lot of people who are full of, uh, full of themselves and who talk a good deal, talk a good job, but Darren actually did a good job, a very, very good job. And hard, hard act to follow. So uh, thank you for allowing me this uh, short time. Thank you. Thank you. Now we'll move on. Apologies for absence, please. Thank you, Chair. Uh, Councillor Andrew Johnson, Councillor Shannon Johnson, Councillor Mike Guy, Councillor Richard Churchill. Mm -hmm. Just one for us, Councillor Emma Thank you very much, indeed. Declarations of interest. Council's declaration of in relation to any item on the agenda, please. <coughs> Chair, I uh, declare a person of interest in item 9 and on debate. Thank you. Item 3, the minutes, uh, to agree the minutes on the meeting held on the 25th of May. Agree? Agree. Can I accept these as correct record? Yeah? Agree. Thank you. Councils, officers, member of the public. Now I have the opportunity to say a few words. I've been to a number of functions since being made chair, but I do not propose to read them all out, because I'm sure it would all bore you to tears. I will highlight a few in the town that gave me so much pleasure, and apart from the Jack Petty Awards, which I have to say are always well received and a great occasion. The other three all have main reference to Harley's 70th birthday. The first one of these I attended was this Harley Primary Music Festival. Uh, this was put on for the 70th. It was in two parts. I went to the first part of Mark Hall's school. Nine schools took part. It was wonderful, so much talent, so many young people, and Maggie, our vice chair, went to the second half in the town park, and I know she felt the same thing. We then went to Harlow College for the student celebration at uh, Glass Box Theatre. Plenty of music and entertainment, plus excellent awards. Then came our own town centre awards. This is the first time we have had these, and boy oh boy, what a roaring success. So many people attended with so much drive and enthusiasm. It was a very good evening and so well thought out. Going on to what comes next, a big celebration for Harlow's 70th birthday, our carnival on the 23rd of July. We have not had one of these in years, and I know how much work has been put into getting this organised. On the day, we have 11 dignitaries from surrounding authorities to come and support us. So please, please come along and support our town in its 70th year, and support our residents. They need to see their councillors out there. We then have my civic service on the 10th of September, of which I hope again to have your support. Also, on the 25th of September, I will be holding a charity golf day at Cannons Brook Golf Club. I really do hope that some of, or all of you, 
will be able to attend and support these events. I'd just like to take the opportunity to remind you of my charities, Young Carers and St Clair's Hospice. Having met with the Young Carers, I'd love to be able to help them. Please help me to be able to do this. Thank you. Right, moving on. Petitions from the public. There are no petitions. Questions from the public. No? Right. right, questions from councillors. I understand we've got a question for Councillor David Carter, who has a, a, has a question for Councillor Pertman for the portfolio of the foreign environment. Do you, to re, do you wish to read out your question, David? No, I'm quite happy that it's on paper. Right. Yeah. Thank you. Does David wish me to read out the answer? No, I'm quite happy. No, you didn't. Right. And you, you didn't want to supplement all yes. that yes. yes. You do? Yes. Okay. <coughs> yeah, I'd like to thank Council Perth for the answer. Um, I'm in full, full support of what he puts down here, and uh, I've brought this question today to make sure it stays high profile within the Council. Southern Way is an awful problem. I've spent uh, two hours in the last couple of weeks sitting watching the traffic go through. In a two hour period last week, 147 large lorries went down some way, most of whom cannot go down the roundabouts, they go over it. Five lines up from the bottom, Councillor Purton has said we must work together to get Essex County Council to change their mind over the introduction of the NNPP. I'm fully supportive of that and I will help in any way I can. Thank you. Right. Okay, I understand that. Sorry, David, you obviously didn't hear me earlier on. I asked if you would like to read it, read it out. They said no, but you've read it out. No, Councillor no, Burke, no, have you got a supplementary? No, that was it, was it? Okay. Right. Um, right, let's move on. Um, motions from councillors. Okay. Right. Now we move on to item 9, uh, the main debate. I will hand this over to John. John, you will have a maximum of 10 minutes. Thank you. Thank you, Chair. Um, I started with the introduction to my last year's main debate by saying it had been an eventful year. But to say that the last 12 to 14 months have been eventful internationally, nationally, and globally <coughs> here in Holland would be a significant undertaking. You see the election of Donald Trump, the EU referendum, a general election, as well as the terrorist attacks in Manchester and London, and most recently the Grenfell Tower. We're living in turbulent times, politically and socially. More locally, there have been many positive things, which I'll come to later, but it'd be wrong of me not to acknowledge some of the less positive things. A number of good people have passed away, people who are proud of Harlem and strive to make it a better place. These include the Council's own Gundula Zari, and as we've already mentioned, uh, Darren Zachary, Beryl Murphy from Water Gardens, local historian Ron Bill, and the former councillors, Muriel Jollis and Guy Mitchell. They will all be sadly missed. It was, of course, a particularly difficult year for the family and friends of Eric, who was killed at the stone, for the Polish community, and for Harlow as a whole. In the wake of this, some sections of the media and some other voices, inside and outside of Harlow, labelled Harlow as a dividing town as a town with one section of the community pitted against another, as a racist town. As I said at the civic service, that's not the Harlow I know. The Harlow is an open, compassionate and welcoming community. A Harlow that recognises that we have more in common than that which divides us. Having said that, there is much to be proud of in Harlow, and some notable achievements. The creation of a council owned company, HDS, which launched this year, will enable us to reinvest in services that matter to Harlow and to provide the necessary flexibility in uncertain times. And following a very <coughs> period, I look forward to a relentless focus on how we can continually improve the services we provide for our residents, both in the maintenance of our housing stock and of our green spaces. Other notable events include Parliament Woods getting its eighth consecutive Green Flag Award and the Town Park getting its first, as already said, with a great tribute to Darren Zachary. It's also 
also the first Julie Parkman on Sunday mornings, and Saturday Parkman going from strength to strength. A great series of exhibitions in the Gibbon Gallery, another opening this evening, to commem the commemoration of the song of last July, and securing a three year extension to the injunction against unauthorised encampments in Harlem. We also had royal visits, both of a fictional kind, with the filming of the Netflix drama The Crown to be heard yeah. this year, and of the real kind, with the visit of the Dutch Duke and Duchess of Cambridge to students. This year also marks the 70th anniversary of the designation of Harlow as a new town. The council has been supporting many community led events, celebrating its rich history and the great community spirit, and has extensive coverage in, in the media. Everything from the Spiegel Band Festival at the Latin Bush Centre, a community picnic at the community farm, the Art of the Garden Party, the Harbour Harlow Festival, the Spring Clean, the council's social media campaign, 70 Things We Love About Harlow, and of course, as uh, the chair has already said, the carnival race this month to be followed by the ever popular Olympic But it's also about looking forward to a bright future over the next 70 years. The location of Public Health England's National Science Hub in Harlow, which will bring 2,700 jobs and many other benefits, reached another important milestone with the purchase of the GSK, GSK site announced last week. And we expect to see a planning application for the additional building on that site later this year. The Enterprise Zone continues to make great progress, with the excellent facilities at Cave Park already 75% occupied. The data camp has been fully funded and the first building due to complete at the end of this year. Anglia Ruskin University is committed to locating their Ventech Innovation Centre on the London Road South Science Park, one of its first tenants. And the Council is investing significantly in further development of the Enterprise Zone, which will provide much really needed jobs, as well as providing a source of income for independent and central government. And we're targeting the start of construction of the first two buildings at the end of this year. Harlow has also been granted garden town status, there in forest and east parts, which, in the words of a government minister, will put at the front of the queue for infrastructure investment. There have been many other pieces of jigsaw starting to fall into place. Construction got underway on the regeneration of the Briars Cotswold Close and Ellis Field development. Having for Prentice Place and moving forward, a new cinema opened in the Harvey Centre, funding for Junction 7 neighbours to fuel the opening of the Spurious Cafe in the town park, and a new rugby club having its launch tomorrow. The regeneration of Harlow is starting to gather pace. There is still much to do, however, in securing investment in the new hospital, the wider infrastructure improvements, regeneration of our town centre, and securing necessary housing and community facilities for Harlow people. Against the backdrop of continuing government cuts and uncertainty on the funding of local government, and in particular what could happen with the retention of local business rates, Council continues to stand up for Harlow, protect services, and make sure they are sustainable into the future, not just in the short term. We will continue to focus on driving down costs, but also investing in the future. Over the coming year, we'll bring forward plans to tackle our social behaviour, secure much of services such as Pets Corner, the Playhouse, and the Paddling Pools, as well as exploring options for building new council homes, improving the maintenance of Harlow's building green spaces, promoting our rich and artistic cultural heritage putting Harlow residents and businesses at the heart of all that we do. In summary, Chair, <coughs> many of the pieces of the are starting to fit into place. And while I understand there will be much debate about individual elements, the particular location of, of some housing or road improvements, I would urge everyone to look at the bigger picture and look forward to a bright future for all of Harlow. The Council is committed to doing all it can to make a positive and visible difference, to make the best of the great potential of Harlow, working hard to secure the investment we need and to ensure that Harlow continues to be a great place fit for the next 70 years. With leadership and determination, and all together, in common endeavour, we can make this happen. Thank you, Jeff. Well, thank you, uh, Madam Chairman. I am delighted to lead the opposition response to the State of the Council debate this year. Harlow is 70. This year has been an opportunity to reflect on the town's past and present. The town where several of us in this room were born and bred has come of age. This town has been under underestimated for decades, but people are beginning to take more notice of our town. I want to take this opportunity to pay tribute to all the faith-based groups and charitable organisations do so much for the people in need in this town. For two years now, 
I have volunteered at St Mary at Latin's homeless project during the winter. My understanding of homelessness has been turned on its head through talking to individuals staying the night and offering them friendship. The complexities of homelessness in our town are wide ranging, but what is common amongst all the individuals is that society hasn't extend, extended the hand of kindness as much as it should. That must change. Hollis churches and charities like Streets to Homes do this day in, day out. They are an example to all of us. Our community spirit has endured the test of time and should be in our thoughts as we celebrate the town's 70th. I very much look forward, like all councillors, to the carnival procession. Harlan is becoming an important centre for British innovation. Harlow's Enterprise Zone is an example of where Harlow is leading the way. The development of the data centre attracts a range of opportunities, just like in 1966 when fibre optic communications were invented on the same site, which paved the way for modern technology like broadband internet. Cow Park and the Enterprise Zone, I'm sure, will lead the way in modern technological advances. I also want to welcome the Public Health England announcement that has brought in £400 million worth of investment to create a well-leading home for public health science. This was achieved by the brilliant negotiating skills of our Chief Executive, support of our local Member of Parliament, Essex County Council and the Government. Town centre regeneration is important too. And the Council has recently set out more clarity on its vision. But whilst it is important Market Square is invested in and that we ensure facilities are there to attract more people to shop in the town centre, this latest makeover plan is not ambitious enough. Residents want Harlow Council to push forward with their plans to regenerate the town centre that will leave a, past, a lasting positive impact and deliver attractive new facilities for everyone to enjoy. There should be more emphasis on the delivery of the bigger picture, investing in better infrastructure across the town centre to attract a better variety of retail and leisure opportunities. Turning to wider community issues, I want to address crime in Harlow. We have all been concerned about the number of violent incidents in the town recently. But if you look at local crime statistics, the number of reported offences is stable. Yes, it is important not to shy away from tackling these issues, but I maintain the view that Harlow is a safe place to live. I'm sure also that people were horrified by the scenes at Grenfell Tower. I want to praise the work of our own housing department for its years of proactive work that's helped make our tower blocks safe. My colleague, Councillor Simon Carter, will address this in his speech in more detail. Whilst I stay on more positive ground, I also want to welcome the renewed court injunction that allows for travellers to be moved from unauthorised sites by 2020. This will not have been achieved without the help of our local MP, Essex County Council, and the Police and Crime Commissioner for Essex. <laughs> by working in partnership, we can overcome some of the key challenges in our community. Sadly, the actions of this administration to tackle the big issues facing Harlow should be viewed with closer scrutiny. It is clear that the political leadership of this council is failing Harlow in several key strategic areas. The performance of the administration to negotiate, with the local, uh, to negotiate the local plan with other political leaders in our strategic housing area is pretty woeful. What makes matters worse is that there will be no full consultation with Harlow residents over where housing should go. Our neighbourhood, neighbouring district councils have nothing to hide and have opened up their plans for full consultation. At Cabinet a few weeks ago we were presented with the policies that would be applied to new development but a hundred pages of the local plan that would spell out the administration's intentions for development were missing. 
they clearly have something to hide. We oppose any development to the south and west, plans to build thousands of homes to the northeast, at the back of Old Harlow and Churchhead Street. <clears throat> Will the portfolio holder for environment confirm tonight that if the number of housing projections change, and there is the potential for pressure to build more homes in Harlow, that he will consent to consulting residents more widely. Housing and town landscaping are important issues for residents across the board. And I have to say that I was a sceptic of the HTS group and the tight deadline for it to take over landscaping and housing maintenance in Harlow. The executives and the offices at Harlow Council did handle the transition professionally. The issue now is the ongoing delivery and the lack of strategic focus the council has to hold HTS to account and to act forcefully as a shareholder to ensure standards are maintained. At the last HTS shareholder subcommittee, there was a lot to be left to the design because the council had not set out appropriate expectations. Miscommunication will affect the delivery of this if it's not resolved quickly. Taking all this into consideration, what would a future Conservative administration do differently? We would fight for a local plan fit for Harlow's future with a clear strategy. Conservatives would focus development to the north of Harlow, entering into robust negotiations with neighbouring councils to get the best deal for our town. This means no development to the south, west and north east of Harlow. Residents will also have their say on developments in a full consultation. The administration has commenced procurement of the domestic waste contract post June 2018 when the current extension ends. We want to maintain weekly collections, so we'll be following the procurement process with interest. It is important to work with the third sector on much loved services in the future. And maintain the principle of long term planning for the sustainability of services like Pets Corner and the Playhouse. We would also ensure stability. The appointment of the managing director of this council has stalled. The position needs to be filled by October. This administration must now set out a revised timetable for an urgent appointment immediately. We also will be working hard to ensure the closure of Old London Road doesn't go ahead. 2,000 people have joined the campaign group in the space of a week. All our efforts will be on opposing the signing of the traffic regulation order. Councillor Ian Grundy must listen to the overwhelming majority who oppose the plan. Splitting Old Harlow in two is not the answer. Harlow needs an administration that is able to take the right strategic decisions for this town, deliver prudent management of the council's finances, and deliver a long-term sustainable plan for key community services. It is only with the Conservatives that a plan for Harlow's prosperity can be found. Thank you, Chair. Um, gives me the opportunity to look back and to look forward on housing issues that affect our town. This year, I believe, has been an even more important year. A truly shocking incident in Kensington with the Tower Block fire. My priority is to reinsure and respond to Tower Block residents' concerns. All council Tower Blocks are inherently safe and we have <coughs> taken the opportunity to review our fire risk assessments and fire safety plans with Essex Fire and Rescue Service. This is ongoing and we will listen very carefully to what comes out of the public inquiry and any recommendation. And like the previous speaker, I'll take this opportunity to thank the hard work that's done by all housing staff on this issue. Many hours went into reassuring and corresponding with our residents on this very important subject. The landscape for housing has changed and will change more. The controversial Housing and Planning Act 2016 brought in significant changes to the provision and management of affordable housing in England. 
Chambers to secure tenancies. The sale of how high value voids to pay for housing association right to buy. Together, with the centrally setting of local rents all provide an environment of uncertainty which makes housing planning very difficult. I and my Housing Standards Board colleagues are assessing the impact, implications and opportunities that arise from this game-changing legislation, which is still out there, as well as the new housing white paper which seems to have disappeared. Some of the potential housing game changes are the sale of health value council homes, social housing regulation, voluntary right to buy, starter homes, <coughs> high income social tenants pay to stay, redefinition of secure tenancies. This administration still has housing as a top priority, including tackling housing need in all forms, with more houses available in Harlow, with a wider choice of housing types that are generally affordable helping to improve the choices for those in housing need and targeting the reduced resources <coughs> to improve housing conditions. There are going to be less resources in place to take to take on priorities, but the Labour Administration wants to ensure that we address this appropriately. We need to signpost our priorities for the coming year. I'd like to turn to what we've achieved in the last 12 months. We've invested £25 million pounds which is now £80 million from 2013, and continuing to deliver over 40,000 improvements to our housing stock to improve the living condition of its tenants tackling local priorities. We have prioritised energy efficiency savings, significantly improving the energy efficiency of the council homes to tackle fuel poverty. We've completed phase one of the major estate regeneration programme at the Bryce, Copshaw Post and Adelsfield. The housing register loan continues to grow, increasing the incidence of homelessness, which I'll return to later, over a 35% increase in temporary accommodation. We continue to work to let our homes in a fair and transparent manner. We've achieved accreditation to our care line scheme, which offers security to the most vulnerable residents in this town. We've put more resources into tenancy support services, recognising there's a growing area, but enforcing tenancy conditions fairly when required. Strong landlord performance in key landlord areas such as rent collection, service charge collection, turning round empty properties and repairing our homes. My thanks go to the successful transition of HTS, more to do with delivering council priorities. We celebrated for the third year running partnership working with Essex County Council on Manacle Home Care and providing <coughs> extra care housing at Summers Farm Close for the most elderly and most vulnerable. But welfare reform changes, under occupational charge, universal credit, credit sorry, are placing huge pressure on council tenants. Funding for support services for older people from Essex County Council have consistently reduced over the last few years, culminating in the removal of funding altogether from 2017. The impact on service users has resulted in 51 dis dispersed alarm users turning their equipment as they don't want to pay for the service no more. However, the impact on sheltered tenants has been minimal, with the majority accepting the fact they need to pay now more for these services. This has reinforced recent tenant consultation meetings, with tenants accepting they need to fund the support services they receive. Been another successful year working with tenants. Mark, your five minutes is okay. up, but I'd like you to carry on just to finish the last couple of sentences. Thank you. So, you want to finish in the middle? Yes. Okay, I'd like to, I will skip now to a very important subject to be touched on. Homelessness is still an issue that we must yeah. and will take seriously. I do support the homelessness reduction bill and have been heartened to see so far as getting all parties supporting the central government. Similarly, I was also glad to see both sides of the chamber when debating homelessness at least a couple of Finally, I'd just like to say that it needs to be more change in national housing problems. Thank, Thank you, Chair. Thank you, Chair. Thank you, Madam Chairman. And first of all, can I uh, thank all councillors um, that have been involved in regeneration and enterprise over the last 12 months. I'd like to say that to our UKIP councillors, but I notice there is a huge space where our two colleagues are uh, not there at the present time. 
Um, I noticed the comments from the acting leader of the Conservatives around big issues. And I don't know where he's looking, but let's just remind ourselves, and this debate allows us every year to actually reflect on what we have achieved. Big issues, the rugby club. A, a first-line uh, state-of-the-art facility that's going to enhance the community through sport, activity and recreation. Priority estates bringing real different opportunities for housing growth in the town. Town centre, and I also echo the comments made about the sad death of Darren, who was a key player in the design and the construction of the town park. But look what we have done around social infrastructure, health and activity. These are the big issues that affect our community. Let's look at the enterprise though, and let's look at employment and training. Isn't that a big issue for people to have aspiration about careers? Let's look, and I know Eddie Johnson here, both of us are governors at Harlow College, look at the fantastic engineering centre that has just been opened. And again, it's giving wider access and wider opportunities for people of Harlow. Isn't that a big issue? We can also see the development of Lister House becoming a health and social hub. Again, isn't that a big issue about supporting our local communities around health and social care? We're also developing, finally, Prentice Place, which is actually providing regeneration, rejuvenation of local communities that is based in a local centre. For the people there, that is the big issue. We are also working with communities, and the leader talked about the issues around the stone, but we can also talk about issues, and I know the hard-working uh, councillors of Bush Fair, around uh, what we need to be doing and supporting those local communities and local shops which brings local employment, which brings local access and community engagement. We can also look at the town centre, and I don't disagree, the difficulty is the town centre still is the big one that we still need to tackle. But let's not take away the stuff that we have achieved and the stuff that we want to achieve, which is going to bring growth and opportunity and increasing footfall to enable the shops and the market to actually feel that there is a real opportunity for those particular areas. And let's not dismiss the activities that we're doing on Broadwalk and what we're doing in the Old Market Square, because these are free activities. This is stopping people having to come and sit and buy a coffee, and they can actually sit and enjoy the art and culture and the leisure and pleasure that Harlow Town Centre can bring. Surely that is a big issue. I do agree we have a lot more to achieve, I know uh, Councillor Carter is absolutely right, banging on my door about broadband, and even though we are going to bring that into the town centre, we do know it is not a good in different areas, and we are working hard to try to achieve those. We're also big issues still to outstand, which is the town centre, and about the local plan, and actually about Princess Alexandra Hospital. These things need to get sorted, but we can't sort them, but what we can do is work in partnership in a constructive way to enable that. We've got the pipeline projects looking at the hatches and garage spaces, which will bring growth to Harlow. We also know that there's a lot of housing growth already taking place. We know that because the plans are in about town centre housing. We also know there's interest in post office car park. We also know there's going to be a planning application for new housing in the Stone area. So that in one way that's good, but in another way, we have to make sure that these blend in to our aspirations and our priorities and do not negatively affect our local existing communities. So we need to understand the impact and effect on local communities and, and what new changes can actually bring. So we do have many challenges in regeneration and enterprise, but it, I think we have got clear evidence that over the last 12 months we have achieved success through the hard work and dedication of our staff, and we will power forward on those opportunities as well. So we will aspire and we will be inspired by other people. But actually, we are today's pioneers. 70 years ago, some very brave people with pipes and moustaches and stuff like that were pouring over things and making real key decisions that we have. They were the pioneers, we are the pioneers, and together we can shape our future in common endeavour. Thank you very much.
<coughs> Sorry. Thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, as has already been alluded to by a number of speakers, we were all shocked and horrified at the events of a month ago, uh, the devastation of Redfall Tower. Uh, how could such a tragedy have occurred? We still await an answer to that uh, and many other questions, but it does appear there were a series of issues which horrifically came together. <coughs> and as we start this meeting, our thoughts are with the families and friends of those who perished in the fire. This council is a landlord with 14 high rise blocks. We and our tenants and residents must be reassured that they are as safe as possible. Since, <coughs> as we've already heard from Councillor Wilkinson, since the fire, the council has worked closely with the fire and rescue authorities to check again on the risks associated with high rise blocks and hand deliver uh, letters to every occupier on the issue. Indeed, one aspect of our, our good practice was uh, mentioned on the evening programme. I wrote to the Head of Housing the day after the fire, raising a number of points, and I commend him and his staff for their proper reaction to the plethora of advice coming from the government. However, this was not an instant knee-jerk reaction to a crisis which had arisen, but the culmination of several years' work in checking the safety of tower blocks. This work began following the recommendations of inquiry to an earlier fatal fire in a block in Sutton, Southwark, Wackenhall House. Our tenants panels called for a review of safety and monitored safety work, so monitored safety work programs, including effective self closing fire doors, emergency lighting, clear landings, and contrast edges for steps. <coughs> tenants and tenants are now invited to check blocks of flats on a half yearly basis as part of these safe inspections. This is in addition to the weekly and monthly checks carried out by housing and fire service officers. Madam Chairman, it is the role of the opposition to oppose and challenge the administration. It's also right to commend work where it is done effectively, particularly where it concerns the safety of our residents and tenants. Moving forward, as Councillor Wilkinson has already covered, the Housing Department will see the introduction of the Homeless Reduction Act, it's no longer bill, by the way, uh, later this year. This legislation will place greater demands on councils to intervene earlier to prevent people becoming homeless in the first place. Homeless prevention will not be a new duty. The Council has been working closely with and supporting the third sector partners, such as Streets and Homes, with great success. The Council is probably in a better place to take on these new, new, this new legislation than many other councils where there are not such highly effective uh, charities already in, in existence. I will propose that the Council engage with the National Practitioner Support Service, which has, over the past few years, worked with the government and local authorities to provide training and exchange good practice in dealing with homelessness. Adopting these new responsibilities will place additional strain on housing staff, and I'm sure they will welcome any additional support. Thank you, and some of the great work that has been achieved in regeneration in particular, which as you um, know, I take great interest in myself and I'm really pleased with the work with regeneration that started here under this administration has continued on with the, uh, with the Labour Party opposite. And the work that's been mentioned with Parliament Wood and I'm looking forward to the Carnival also. And I also want to mention the visit of the Duke and Duchess of Cambridge to Parlow. That was a very proud moment in the town's history. And I was really pleased to have been there there myself to have witnessed them and it was absolutely a wonderful day to have been there and the children of the steward school had a fantastic time. Uh, even though they were standing in the rain for quite some time, it didn't seem to dampen their spirits one minute. And I would like to just take a, a small moment just to divert possibly from where we would normally go in this debate and just to mention, we've mentioned, uh, the council obviously have talked about some of the great people that have passed away in our town recently. And I'd also like to mention one great person who I personally uh, believe we need to mention, and that's <coughs> the retirement of the head teacher of Stewards Academy, who's given almost 30 years of loyal public service yeah. to this town. And I was a little disappointed to find that a civic award um, 
wasn't forthcoming for this person, and I will certainly be writing to the civil war panel myself now and be recommending that in the future because... Did you know that? I didn't personally, but I was aware that I had been nominated. But suffice this to say, um, I certainly believe that somebody who devotes themselves to public duty in such a uh, tireless fashion should be um, commended, and I commend her here today. So um, that's that. Uh, in terms of Enterprise Zone, I'm really excited by Enterprise Zone and the future that that holds for this town. And I was really, really uh, proud to have been the portfolio holder in charge when Enterprise Zone was awarded to the town. And I'm really pleased to see it going from strength to strength under the administration. Um, we talked about the big issues, however, we talked about some of the big issues. The one thing that I would draw concern about, though, however, um, in everything here is sometimes the slow pace of all change. And I know things are sometimes slow, but when you consider that a lot of these things were started when we were in administration many years ago, it does seem sometimes the pace of change is tiresome and slow, particularly with town centre redevelopment. Uh, and I get the sense sometimes that we haven't always, as a council and the administration, hasn't always been focused sharply enough on redeveloping the town centre in particular. And they tended to just sort of float in the breeze and pick up on the latest soundbite. And I really would urge them to be more focused in the future and really try and develop um, the town centre for the betterment of the town. Councillor Durkin was right. They do need to understand more the impact that the decisions they make have on the community. And that's why I would urge them to consult more widely on the local plan and to ask residents their views on where proposed housing is going. Because this administration has flip-flopped over the years on development to the south and west of Harlow in particular. And they have even gone against their own word in the past municipal year and are now openly supporting development to the south and west of Harlow, which we do not support on this side. And I really, really urge them to consult with their residents and to find out what they really think on these matters. Going forward, I hope we can work together on the things that we agree on. And I know Robert Halfham, for example, is actively campaigning for a new hospital for Harlow. And his input in all of these great big issues, such as Enterprise Zone, such as bringing uh, Public Health England to Harlow and the massive investment that it brings, have been a real help to the endeavours of both us and the administration over there, and I hope they can continue to work with him to try and bring a new hospital to the people of Harlow. Yeah. So thank you for the time to speak, Anche. Yeah. Right, we've probably got time for one more speaker. Does anybody else wish to say anything? No? Okay, now we're going for something else. John, you're first. Uh, five minutes. Well, thank you, Madam Chairman. I think this has been a really important debate tonight. We've covered a number of areas that are very positive for the town. The enterprise zone, the work to secure the injunction. With some of those key decisions that have been made for the town, including Public Health England, partnership with a range of agencies, the government, our Member of Parliament, this council and Essex County Council has been important. And as we move forward as a council, that spirit of partnership working is incredibly important. We know that there are a number of pinch points across this town in terms of improving infrastructure and supporting the community on certain issues to do with crime and antisocial behaviour. But it is partnership that I feel has been the key thing of this debate tonight. Obviously, we're very concerned as an opposition with the local plan. <coughs> Political leadership, as I said in my speech, just isn't there, and they haven't been working well with neighbouring local authorities. <laughs> Plans to develop on the south, the west, northeast of Harlow fly in the face of the public opinion of where houses really should go in this strategic housing area. We maintain the view that the, North, the, the administration may crow, but we maintain the view, we maintain the view that the north of this town is where housing should grow. And we will maintain the view. The most important thing, the most important thing in this debate is the fact that Harlow is 70 years old. 
It's a milestone for this town. The decades have passed in this town. The history that has been made by the individuals, the, the individuals that built this town at the very beginning, have shaped the community and made it what it is now today. We have had an opportunity to celebrate that this year. And I think the carnival will cap off what has been an excellent celebration for Harlem. As I've said before, Harlem is on the map now. It's, a, it's of significant strategic importance in the east of England. Its influence extends far wider than that. And people listen to what we have to say. Because we are innovators in this town, we've achieved fantastic things, more, more fantastic achievements in some bigger local areas than our own. And what we need to do now is have an administration that is ready to tackle the big issues. Councillor Tony Durkin talked about that. But the true reality of this debate is that on the big issues like the local plan, appointing someone to lead the executive of this council, we're stalling. We need a smooth running machine in this council, but the Labour Party can't offer it. We as Conservatives okay. will. The Labour Party actually speak now, please. I don't want to hear any noise. Thank you. Thank you, Sharon. Quite sure I've got the motion for Weedham Council to be the Labour Party, but I'll take that for a moment. I'd like to start by just echoing some of the comments that have been made, and, and, in, and in particular the credit given to the valuable work of you know, the charitable sector, the golf sector in Harlem. Um, two have been mentioned, um, Sweet for Homes, um, I've mentioned the Chocolate Run, um, both groups, Rainbow Service and Maggie, and I absolutely um, would en endorse that, make an absolutely valuable contribution um, to, the, to the town, uh, and I, I'm um, pleased to, to help in any way I can. I'm going to quietly skate over the shameless attempt to try and credit our RMP with anything to, whatsoever to do with the injunction. Mm -hmm. The uh, result of mm -hmm. uh, a significant amount of hard work um, by, by council officers. Uh, and quite frankly, the sort of partnership working with the county council, well, I have to say, we're a little reluctant um, to engage in federal lines, and I have to have quite stern words with the then chief executive and leader of the council. But the reason I can have those conversations is because I do have a good working relationship with all our partners uh, around uh, Harlem. Mm -hmm. You mentioned the local plan about they're just not um, strong enough. That we should just tell them, as, as um, uh, the leader of the opposition party has said, to just build another 10,000 houses. They seem to be taking a leaf out of Theresa May's Brexit negotiation bill. <laughs> you could just demand something and it happens. But actually, where, where you get results is to have those um, frank conversations, um, conversations like I had with both the leader and chief executive of East Hearts Council last week when I was at the Liverpool Government Association Conference those continual dialogues to get the right result for Harlow. And I will continue to develop those, those um, relationships where we can have frank exchange of views with partners, whatever their political persuasion, and get the right result for Harlow. I also want to pick up briefly uh, this comment about um, delivery of a, a proven plan and a long-term plan for uh, stable services, particularly um, things that are mentioned around the playhouse and what have you. This is precisely what this administration does. It doesn't take short-term decisions just designed to have a headline and political leaflet. It takes decisions that are sustainable, for the long-term future, that, that look uh, after the interests of Harlem. Some of those decisions might be popular in, the, in pockets of areas or you know, um, at a particular time. But we'll always make decisions that are in the interest of Harlem's um, uh, future. And I'll, and I'll just close there that the important thing about now, yes, is to celebrate our rich heritage but it is looking forward to look at the big picture, to not look at each little piece of the jigsaw and say, I don't like that little piece, I'm going to throw it away, but to make sure that all those pieces fit together with partnership working for a bright future for Harlow. Thank you, Chair. to uh, make the proposal that the Cabinet recommends to full Council as it's written on the paper on 10A. Thank you. 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 Thank you